It's Wes. Welcome to another video. Today I'm at Crystal Cove State Park. I'm here for a little hike with my wife. We've been indoors a lot lately this week and we're just getting out going for a little fresh air, trying to take care of ourselves, stay healthy. But I thought this would be a great time to compare two types of time lapses you can do. One where the camera stays the same exposure all the way through and one where the camera adjusts the exposure on each frame. All right, it's a simple test. Let's get into it. I have two Canon EOS R's, both 35 millimeters, same exposures, and we're gonna see which method works best. Peace. You're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first person to tell you that. I hope that you're doing well. Leave a comment right now under this video and let me know where you are when you are watching this. A lot of us are at home due to the coronavirus situation and we're staying home to stay safe and to stop the spread of the virus. But one thing I love about the YouTube one thing I love about the YouTube is the community. We share different life experiences and backgrounds, but we have a common interest, whether it's the Canon EOS R, photography or videography, or just watching videos on YouTube. I hope you're well, and I encourage you to hang in there. We're in this together. All right, let's jump back into the video. Today we're talking about time-lapse photography, and my apologies for the intro, it was a bit of a trick. I got some questions on the EOS R's two time-lapse setting options. Whether you should opt to have the EOS R's time-lapse setting take exposure from the first frame, or whether you should have it readjust the exposure based on each new shot. But here's the thing, I realized that when I went to set up the cameras, I chose manual mode because I wanted the best exposure for the scene. I'm using my artist's eye and my photographer's mind to interpret the scene and direct the camera. That means if you're shooting manual, if the camera is in manual mode, the setting to have the camera adjust exposure on every shot will not actually adjust the exposure because it can't, because you've locked the camera out of making changes. If you're shooting manual, which you should be, then you aren't even gonna think about the second option. So there is a time and a place to use the option where the camera adjusts the exposure uh, on each shot and there's some problems with it. It's not as important as the top 10 tips I'm about to share, so I'll wait until the end of the video to address this use case. All right, top 10 tips for time-lapse photography. So much more to get a great time-lapse. Let me break this down for all of us. In the old days, like mm, 2017, you might have needed an intervalometer or a time-lapse remote. In the old days, the camera using an intervalometer would take pictures on a regular basis for a fixed amount of time, and you would get a ton of individual images. Then you would combine them in your editing software, and finally they'd become a video. Well, it was like giving birth to a baby. No more, you can have as many time-lapse babies as you want without all the struggle. The gift of technology. The Canon EOS R has a time-lapse mode that uses the photographic power of the Canon EOS R, taking still images, but lacing them all together in a movie file. You can watch my video up here on how to access the time-lapse movie function on the EOS R. All right, so the top 10 tips, I'm gonna break it down. Six tips on the craft of time-lapse photography. Here are my craft considerations. Tip one, set your camera's manual settings to get the best exposure that you know you'll love as individual images for the scene at hand. However, that's not enough to end up with stellar time-lapse footage. Tip number two, use an ND filter. Now we're talking about time-lapse during the day. And that's so tip number three, you can choose slower shutter speeds, which gives you a bit of motion blur, which ends up providing a more cinematic quality to the time-lapse. Tip number four, is add movement. One way is to add a slider. As you take the footage, you can use the camera movement to create a change in perspective or a parallax effect. So one option is a slider, but you can also, tip five, add movement in post by keyframing pans or zooms into the edit. Tip number six is to combine movement added with the camera moving on a slider with post-production movement, zooming in or even panning more. All right, so here's the most important consideration. Why do you even want a time lapse in the first place? The best reason is to evoke an emotional response from the viewer. Majesty, boredom, excitement. There's so many emotions you might want to awaken in your viewer. 
So I have two artistic considerations and these are very important. Tip number seven is think of the feeling you want before you begin. Hectic, peaceful, stressful, majestic, Tip number eight is align that feeling with the angle, composition, and length of the time lapse. And I'll close with two practical considerations. Tip nine seems obvious, but I have to say it, use a tripod, period. You want stability and consistency of composition from shot to shot because the subject is changing from frame to frame and second to second. So don't even think about shooting a time lapse without a tripod. Tip number 10, think of the end goal, the project, the audience, Think of the use for the time lapse. Where, when, and how long will it be used? Is it just a second of footage you're looking for between other clips, or is it actually more of a showcase piece central to the story you're telling? All right, now I have some bonus tips. How much time do you have? The longer the interval between the photos, the longer it'll take to create your time lapse. Taking one photo every 10 seconds will take 240 seconds or four minutes to get one second of time lapse, which is 24 frames in that second. What's the effect you want to create? The shorter the interval, the slower things will move in your time lapse. The longer the interval, the quicker things will appear to move in your time lapse. Calculate how long you'll need to capture footage to create the feeling you want for the time you want or the length you want. And finally, what about the mode where the camera adjusts settings on each shot? That should provide the superior image, right? Well, here's the thing. If you are letting the camera adjust, let's say the sun is going behind clouds off and on. When the sun is out, the camera says to itself, hey, it sure is bright out here. Let me increase my shutter speed, for example. Then when the cloud covers the sun, the camera says to itself, hey, it sure is dark out here. Let me keep my shutter open longer. So as the camera compensates for the changing light, you'll possibly see flickers in your footage as the shots go from brightly exposed to darkly exposed. Now, on an individual image, this can be great. But remember, the EOS R is going to lace all the images together, package them into a movie file for you, so all you see is a video where the footage flickers bright to dark. Now here's another use case. What about going into nighttime from around the time sun sets? So good point. Keep in mind, we talked about the flickering, we just talked about that. So in this case, as the sun goes down, the camera will keep brightening the exposure by making adjustments. So in fact, you'll stretch how bright the scene looks for longer, which is the opposite of a time lapse. The time lapse is to show the change over time so it makes sense to me to keep the exposure the same, like the human eye experiences the scene. When it gets dark, it gets very dark, very natural. To me, the other way is unnatural. True, you'll get more brighter footage longer, but you're trying to speed that up anyway. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> now keep in mind, we didn't really discuss night time lapses or astro time lapses or hyper lapses, even though you might see some examples in there, but those would be great topics to explore in a future video. Leave me a comment if you're interested in those. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and let me know your time lapse tips. I would love to connect with other people and learn from them. Take a second and click the subscribe button and like this video if you've liked any part of it. Thank you for watching. Stay safe out there. Stay well. Be well. I miss you. I love you.